There we go. That works too. Hello? Hi. Hi. Um, greetings. Um, <laughs> my name is Richard Potter, and I'm a junior Penn student, biochemistry major, and Harry's cousin. You might have heard of him. Harry Potter. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So my, my life up until high school um, had no aspect of religion whatsoever. I attended a Catholic high school and went through the motions of Catholicism, just like everyone else, in order to fit in. I went to Mass retreats, and eventually I think I memorized the Our Father and all the responses he had to say during Mass, just by listening. Because religious studies were mandatory for all students, I was exposed to the Old and New Testament and Catholic ethics. None of it mattered much to me besides the letter on the report card. But little did I know that God was planting seeds of faith. However, I was emotionally, spiritually, and personally lost in my sin. October 30th, 2011 was the day my father passed away after battling liver disease for a few years. I experienced shock, sadness, and ultimately emptiness at first hardening any parts of my heart that were possibly open to God. Watching my mother and I struggle emotionally and financially accelerated the hardening. Some nights, some days, I watched my mom burst into tears and cry about not being able to afford certain things, about, have, about us having to move frequently, and about us not having any help from nearby family because our family was not nearby. Um, but during the time, I also began to think about the meaning behind tragedy but I made it a point to continue working harder than before in school with more motivation to become self-sufficient and less of a burden, especially in the face of avid competition from high school peers. With these goals, I distracted myself from God calling out to me. I began to rise in popularity my junior year, scoring lead roles in school plays, winning math competitions, and holding leadership positions in my clubs. I was the polished outer casing of a broken interior one that ignored pain to invest in an unsatisfying goal. I took AP Latin with one of the most beloved teachers of the school, affectionately named Papa Marx. He invested so much into our small class, making the scriptures of Virgil's Aeneid so real and fascinating until he passed away from cancer. I began to feel the same emptiness again and the same search for meaning but I was too lost and distracted with my goals to grieve deeply with my class. I wrongly resorted to self-harm as an attempt to cope with my frustration and my emptiness. Getting accepted to Penn was a double-edged sword to me. My mother and I became so proud in that moment of what I had been working for, and we believed that this was the key to a better future. I like to imagine myself coming from nothing, working three summers doing landscaping work to help our financial situation, to my daydreams of future success as a doctor. My idol of success became so strongly held by me that I lost what little control I had over any other idols. Anger, pride, envy, and lust took such a great hold of me that I had no realization of how it was manifesting. I, I just remember breaking more than several pieces of electronic equipment and countless less important objects, frequently using common four-letter expletives to cope with anger that arose from things not going my way or watching others rise above me. The culture and mentality of Penn so subtly reaffirmed the values I held so close to me. I received a call from my mother very early into the second semester of my freshman year. I watched rain pour out onto the sidewalks outside my dorm, and she told me that she had been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. At that moment, I imagined the life of my mother, whom I had grown so close to, and admired in so many ways, who had known me for my entire life, being the only person to do so, and just imagined my sadness becoming overwhelming as I remembered my father's hand, holding my father's hand for the last time, and this time imagining my mother's there. The weight of academic and personal anxiety sadly led me to still keep suppressing myself and focus on success and I abandoned optimism to look at the harsh reality of life, and this kept me going somehow. I didn't understand the true weight of Jesus' love for me or for all of us. Yet I truly know that God had a purpose planned for me in coming to Penn greater than any possible future success. 
I attended my first GCC service that summer. I was at my lowest emotionally, but through persistent invitation from a brother, I opened my heart slightly and gave it a try. On one of the first days, meeting more than 40 people who welcomed me so intimately and desired my presence was sort of odd and overwhelming. But, but as I came out more to Sunday services, more FNLs, and even family group, I realized coming to know Christ was like being found, like an apologetic, tearful child coming home after attempting to run away from his or her parents. Recognizing my sin, practicing Jesus' virtues, reading his word, and being open to transformation were starting to make sense to me. Jesus was like a breath of fresh hope to me. Such a contrast to my previously uncontrolled emotion, sin, negativity, and disbelief. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 is crucial to my newly Christ-centered life. It reads, For we walk by faith, not by sight. At the apex of the life I led right before becoming Christian, I walked according to my sight. The circumstances of our family and finances directly, directly shaped my responses. Walking by faith is having Jesus be Lord over the areas of my life. His grace, his love, and his guidance have been transforming me, and it testifies of his reality. I mentioned the previous anecdotes because there is good in each one. God's good. So many blessings come from learning to trust how God has used each, how God has used each circumstance intentionally. During last year's retreat, I imagined myself at the foot of the cross. I was overcome with tears and emotion because I truly started to feel who God was at that moment. He had a purpose for the pain I was feeling in the past and in the present. He began to heal the deepest wounds as I experienced his presence so deeply. I've experienced much less anxiety and anger, overcome personal sins through his power, and have had the opportunity to serve for a family group and continue growing in my and others' faith. But most importantly, I have come to genuinely love God and to know how infinitely good he is. He is enough to overcome my struggles. He is enough to raise me to a higher purpose than this earthly life can provide. I believe he is enough to do so for you too. Thank you. Amen.